Hey everyone and welcome to another Nielsen Networking video. In this video we are going to follow up with a previous video we did on virtualization. Uh, in that video we went over how to download, install, and configure uh, VirtualBox on our Windows 10 machine or Linux or Mac, whatever you had. Um, and then we took it a step further and we actually installed a Kali Linux virtual machine inside of that VirtualBox infrastructure. So now we already have our Kali Linux in there. And I thought, you know what, Kali Linux is built for vulnerability scanning, um, network um, penetration scanning, uh, has all these neat cybersecurity tools. I thought, you know, we need we need a secondary or even a third machine at some point to test with. So I thought, you know what, why, what's better than a Windows 10 machine to test with? So I did some research and I found out that we can actually download Windows 10 for free, uh, install it, we will not be activating it. And the only real downside to not activating it is going to be that um, we'll, we'll have a, a few little drawbacks. And that's going to be, we're going to have a little uh, watermark in the lower right hand corner. And we're going to have, um, we're not going to be able to change mouse pointers, wallpaper, um, things like that. Things that aren't going to be a necessity for our goal, which is just to perform some tests. Personal tests, this is not going to be for commercial use or anything such as that. Um, just for personal test. So since we already have this, and if you haven't, link above, go go check out that other video and you know um, learn how to get VirtualBox installed with Kali Linux in it so you can catch up and come back here and continue on with us. We're gonna start now and we're gonna go out and download um, Windows 10 and then we'll take it from there. So why don't we get started? All right, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and pop that down. We're gonna go out to Chrome here or you can go to any web browser, I'm just going to Chrome. And we're going to go to this website here, straight off of Microsoft's website. And we're going to go here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to download Create Windows 10 Installation Media. We're going to download this little tool known as the Media Creation Tool, straight from Microsoft. I will throw this URL in the description so you don't need to write it down. We're going to go ahead and run it. And it's going to take a second here. We're going to read all, all of that thoroughly. We're going to hit accept here. We're going to wait. Here, this is important. You want to create installation media and hit next. You can change this if you need to. Um, I'm not going to because my language is English and I want Windows 10 and I'm on a 64 bit. And here, this is important as well. We need to get an ISO file. Okay, so we're going to hit next and it's going to begin a very long download. As you can see, I already went ahead and did this because this takes a very long time to download on my little computer here. Uh, so I'm going to not save this, but this is where you would actually want to go and save it. Well, actually, you know what? I'll save it here. I'll just I'll save it so you can see what it starts to look like and then I'll just cancel it. Um, so you hit save. And then it's going to start the process and it literally goes and just counts all the way down and when you're done it says it's done um, so i'm going to go ahead and get out of it but you won't because <laughs> you're, you're actually going to want to complete it and that's what you're going to end up when you're done so now we're going to want to go ahead and open up our uh, virtual box here we're going to go new we're going to name this whatever floats your boat i'm going to name it windows 10 and here you could change this if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the default um, because I don't have a secondary drive and I don't really have a reason for it. You may want to do it because you're low on space or you just want to isolate your, all your VMs on a separate volume, um, whatever. But if you did, that's where you would do it. Select your ISO. I believe ours is going to be right here on the desktop. Yours will be wherever you put it. Uh, and here we're going to actually leave this and we're going to let it do an unintended install, install, which is pretty cool. On the next page, it will ask us for our username and password, or you could use the defaults, but I'm going to change it so I know I make sure I know what it is without having to Google what, what the password is. Um, and you're going to have to put in your um, domain name and things like that. So here you're going to want to change this to whatever you want to use um, as your login. Windows user and then Windows user. Yep. Put in whatever password you want and host name. I'm just going to go ahead and make it Windows. 
Um, and I don't really care. So then we'll do windows.nn. That's where you would put your domain. The host name can be um, anything you want. We're going to leave the product key blank. And we're going to go ahead and hit next. Here, I'm going to leave the memory at 2 gigs. If you have the extra, you might want to bump it up a little bit, maybe to go to 3. Um, I only allocated 4 gigs total in between Kali, Linux, and this. I don't have a lot of overhead, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Processors, I'm going to go ahead and leave here. Hard drive space, I'm going to drop this down to 40. Um, we're not going to check pre-allocate. If you do that, it's going to pre-allocate the entire 40 gigs. We don't want to do that. We'd rather go small um, and then be able to stretch. Expand, I guess, is the uh, correct term. Um, and we're not going to use the Kali Linux's hard drive, so we're just going to hit Next. And we're going to hit um, Finish here, and it's actually going to start up on its own and start the installation, and we won't have to touch it until it's done. It's going to reboot, and we'll be at the login screen. So um, I'm obviously not going to make you sit there and watch that, but I'll let you start. Also, I'll let you see the start process of it, and then I'll, uh, I'll pause and come back to you when it's done. It's going to power up the VM here. It's pretty cool how VirtualBox has this set up, especially if you had mult like a bigger infrastructure and you were running this on and you needed to push this out to say 100 windows boxes you know it's pretty cool uh, so it's going to go ahead and start here and i'll let it do a little bit of the installation where you can actually see it's going to say um, setup files so setup is starting uh, and it's about to start actually copying the files in the beginning of the installation here so far it's been about a minute since we started and here you go it's going to copy the files and get it going so uh i'll go ahead and pause here and i'll check back in on you periodically throughout the installation and we are done with the copy into the windows files and we're getting ready for the installation and we're almost getting ready to install features all right it looks like it is done rebooting i walked away for a second and i got here this actually happened pretty quick so we'll let it finish up here Still haven't been able to log in. I did actually do some research while this was downloading, and even though we're not going to go activating this, it will actually install Windows updates and securities updates. So that's that's great news. And we're almost there, apparently. Good timing to come back. And here we go. So it's going to look for a display driver, apparently, for our virtual session on VirtualBox. And I think we're in. So let's go ahead and check a couple things out real quick. Um, let's check connectivity. That's not what I typed, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and ping out. Looking good there. Let's go ahead and see if we get name resolution out to. We did Google before. Let's do Ford.com. Cool, looking good there. Let's just try another one. Uh, Disneyland.com. Looking good there. All right, so we're getting DNS. We're getting an IP address. We're looking cool. I think we're on. Uh, based on how hokey this looks, I think we're on a uh, Windows Home installation. Uh, but that's okay. This is just going to be used for testing. Um, then I just wanted to see here. Let's verify that we are on Windows Home because I'm sh pretty sure we are. Yeah, Windows 10 Home. Okay, this is, again, this is just going to be for testing. Uh, so we're, we're looking good there. And let's get out of here. Let's actually, just because this annoys me, I'm going to go ahead and change that. Personal pet peeve. Um, and obviously you want to download some things on here, maybe get some Chrome on here. There, we're going to want to put a couple applications that we're going to be able to run some of those utilities on the Kali Linux box in a future video against. Uh, but for the purpose of this video we're looking pretty good I want to check out see how much memory we're actually using because we only went with two gigs so we're looking at 62 percent uh, we're we're okay uh, it might get if we were to run Chrome Chrome's a memory hog it might actually start to get us up near 80 90 percent CPU is looking great uh, let's see how much hard drive space we have left probably I would think we'd have at least 50 percent but let's check um, to almost exactly 50%. We're a little, we have a little more than 50%. So you probably could get away, if you're watching this before you did the install, you could probably get away with a, a 30 gig hard drive, probably even 25, but I, I'd go with 30 just to give yourself a little buffer. And if there's going to be any log files or anything or any um, downloads you're going to do on the box. Um, 
So we're looking pretty good there. Um, I think that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, we are going to follow this video up with a video on um, Kali Linux, and we're going to run some scans against this device. We'll have, uh, at some point, we'll pull in a third box, maybe, uh, like I said, a, f a Fedora, a Red Hat, um, or some other, some other device just so we can um, run even more tests. Um, but for the, the, the goal of this video, I think we've accomplished that. We got the Windows box installed here. As you can see now, they are both existing together. I'm not going to fire this one up yet because it's late and I'm going to go to bed for the night. Uh, but in the next video, we will get both fired up and we'll uh, get rolling in on that next video. So I, I appreciate you taking the time to view this video with me. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate a like. I would even greater appreciate a subscribe so I could start to push you guys some more content out uh, as I keep filling up the content uh, on the site. So I hope you all have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Thank you.